All right, today I'm gonna to show you how to repair a Galaxy S23 Ultra with a cracked screen. Now I'm going to be fixing it using a full frame replacement, not just the front display. So that's the repair that we're going to be doing. But like most Samsungs, as far back as I can remember with the Galaxy S6, you're gonna go through the back panel. And what I've done is I've heated up the back of the device on a heat plate at 65 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. I'm using a suction cup and then also some denatured alcohol. Now you can use isopropyl alcohol, which is most common, which is much safer on electronics. I am familiar with this compound and it, and it is not quite like paint thinner, but it will dissolve this adhesive pretty good. Um, so use it your own caution, but I am using something stronger than isopropyl alcohol. Uh, with suction lifting up, I'm using a very thin metal pry tool, just enough to create a small crack in the back glass and then I'm sliding in a plastic tool. Now I switched to plastic because if you go around the curved edges of the device, you're less likely to crack that back glass. So back glass replacements aren't very expensive, but it is annoying when you're taking it off just to replace the battery or the front screen and you end up cracking it. So I've done thousands of back glass replacements and this has been a method that's worked well for me using the heat, the suction, and then some form of like a plastic playing card. And then a really good technique that somebody showed me is once you have your plastic playing card, get your alcohol, put it on the inside of it, and it will just feed it right to the adhesive that you're trying to loosen. So can't recommend this method enough. Now you're not gonna wanna go in further than five millimeters in most um, sections of the display. Uh, most of the flexes on the inside are protected with some sort of like plastic housing. Um, but you do want to be careful in a few areas, especially depending on the model that you're working on, um, especially the cameras, you know, oils, uh, adhesives, they're really hard to get off those rear facing cameras and can be damaged, you know, if you're not, you're not careful, um, but pretty, pretty straightforward. Just stick with your plastic pry tool and gently remove. So there's no flexes attaching the back to the, the phone itself, but what did stay was some of the back panel adhesive. So remove slowly, be mindful of that. And then once we're done, we'll talk about how to seal up that back panel. And uh, yeah, we'll address that. So now we're actually gonna continue with the rest of the device. All right, and like most galaxies, the internals um, have a back panel that covers the top, the middle, and the bottom. Some galaxies, it's one panel. In this particular model, there's three sections. And I'm and in most galaxies, you can use just a Phillips triple zero to remove all of the screws. Not every model is that way, but this particular one is. So there's about 13 screws on here, and I'm just gonna start removing those. Um, you are gonna wanna use steady, even pressure to remove these. They're all the same lengths. That may not be true on some other models. So I'm just play, taking them out in the order that they came out. Um, I am unaware if they need to be taken out um, alternate of each other, like a star pattern, maybe like a car tires would be, but I've used the same method every time and it has worked out fine. There is one screw that's black near the camera. So I have set that aside, but you don't have to worry too much if you mix up screws, but I would always make it a great habit just to have some sort of pattern lined up that you knew where you took these screws out of. So now that we have all of those taken out, I'm gonna kind of highlight the different ribbons you need to disconnect. So once that's off, start with your, your surface level, most obvious ones, typically near the battery. This particular flex is gonna be for the wireless coil. So we're just gonna unclip that. That makes it a little bit easier to unclip the next one, which I believe is an antenna. And on a lot of these, there is some adhesive. So most of the gray that you see is some sort of um, sticker that's attached itself to the plastic frame underneath. Typically, I don't recommend using metal on metal, but I'm just getting up some of that slight adhesive. All right, so now that that's up, I'm starting to pull, but getting a little bit of resistance. So that's your sign. There is something still attached. So upon further inspection, it just looks like some of that gray adhesive is stuck on there. Gently remove it. It's come right off. All right, so usually very first, you're going to remove the battery. So I've disconnected that, and then I'm removing that top small panel that also had a flex on it as well. 
So a couple different things we can do here. It really doesn't matter in which order you start taking flexes off. Um, typically, once you've done the battery, you can then move on to disconnecting all of the others. Most of these go from the daughter board at the bottom and then attach to the top at the motherboard. And so we, we're just gonna start it from top down. That's what I like to do, but again, it doesn't really matter which order. So what I'm highlighting here is there's on each of these panels, there's a little tiny black arrow indicating where it's safe to put maybe a pry tool. And that's what I've done. There's many places you can insert a pry tool and it's really hard to see on camera uh, where those are, but that's what I've done just to get some of these brackets out after the screws are out, um, removing those. Here, don't forget your SIM card tool and your stylus pen. I've seen that many times where you're struggling to remove the daughter board, won't come out. It's because the SIM card tray is still in there and you can cause damage if you forget to remove that. So go ahead and take off these ribbons now that they're accessible. And these are important in which order they go in because they are different sizes. So if you try and put the wrong one in the wrong slot, you could damage some pins. All right, so now what we can start doing, just start disconnecting any of the cables that you, or ribbons that you see. So the front facing camera, uh, is disconnected there. We're gonna disconnect the LCD connector, a 5G antenna, and a stylus connector. Again, doesn't matter in which order you do this, just as long as you're doing it after the battery has been disconnected. So that was very easy to pop up. Once you've got all of your ribbons disconnected, it should come out that way. Very, very easy without much force. If you do encounter force, it's your sign that you probably do have a ribbon still connected. So what's left? We have an antenna, a front facing camera, and the daughter board. So let's start with the daughter board. There's three Phillips screws securing this to the slot. And the daughter board, the USB-C charge port, it feeds into the frame. So you can't just lift this straight up. You kind of have to prop it up and then pull it out at an angle. And you'll see what I mean when we do this. And again, hard to see on the board, but usually if I can't see an obvious place to try and pry from, I'm gonna grab a plastic pry tool and just gently get under it and prop it up. And it just pulls out like that, kind of scoop in motion. All right, so now what we have left, some 5G antennas, front facing camera and the battery. So this particular antenna uses two Phillips screws. Underneath this antenna, there's a, a little bit of adhesive. I've already heated up this device and it should be enough where I can just gently pull it out with some tweezers. Um, there's some metal pry tabs to the left and right of it that the screw secured. I, I usually feed my uh, tweezers through that and pull it out. Usually it comes out no problem. The other antenna that we're gonna work on, it's just held in by adhesive. There are no screws. So what I'm gonna attempt to show you, which again is very hard to see on camera, I'm gonna try and get my metal tweezers and just get as under it as I can where the antenna meets the frame and then insert my, my tool there and then just lift up. It is held just by adhesive. If you're really struggling, hit it with some heat, um, but we're just able to just put that into our replacement. All right, so the last thing, the last two things are the battery and the front facing, front facing camera. I'm gonna let this just sit on the heat plate. Um, that way it can help assist remove both of those items. While that's doing that, I'm gonna grab my replacement part, which again is a full frame replacement. Um, this is gonna replace the, the frame on the side, the OLED display on the front, and depending on the part that you have and where you got it from, it may already include a front facing camera, a vibrator motor, and a few other things. So you do wanna compare your replacement part to your new, your replacement part to your old display to make sure that you've transferred everything correctly. So I've already inserted my um, stylus pen, so we don't forget that. Putting in the motherboard, make sure that you don't accidentally um, trap some of your cables underneath your motherboard. That could damage them, but also you won't find out that until towards the end of the repair when you're putting your brackets on and realizing that they don't fit. It might be because you trap some of the flexes underneath. So I put the motherboard back in. I'm putting the antenna back in. Just like when you're removing them, most of the time it doesn't matter in which order you do it. You will find that some things go on top of each other or underneath, so that will matter. But if you have multiple ribbons, it doesn't matter which one you connect. It's just great practice to plug in your battery at the very end as best as, as you can. 
So let's do the charge port. Again, you scoop it in because that USB-C port needs to go in. You'll, you'll feel that it's held in by tension. There's all these like little kind of, I wouldn't call them springs, um, but they, they rest against the frame and you'll know when it's in when it sits flush. And now I'm putting in our three Phillips screws. And keep in mind, I'm doing all this while my old part is still on the heat plate, heating up the battery adhesive and the front facing camera adhesive. So let's work on that now. I love that the S23s, they've included a pull tab. This is unlike any other Galaxy. So I've lifted the blue tab and I'm just pulling. And this will allow me to grab not only the battery, but the adhesive it's attached to as well. So it didn't leave the old adhesive. It's still stuck to the battery. This is a great new welcomed thing that they've done. Makes it very easy just to transfer. One of the worst things about using a battery from the old display is you can end up bending it, crushing it, poking it. And this pull tab has kind of eliminated all of that for the most part. So I love that they've done this. Now we need to remove the front facing camera. This is a much needed update that they haven't improved from every other model. They basically have um, not super glued, but used hot glue and shoved it around the camera. So what I'm doing, and you have to be careful, this is probably one of the more likely damaged things, is use my metal tweezers, and I'm going in between the channel of the camera and the, the housing that it sits into. It'll make sense when you're seeing it in person, like for yourself, and all I'm doing is gently trying to remove the hot glue that's securing that front-facing camera in place. You can kind of see a little bit of it there. Um, I work on the sides to the left and the right of it, and I avoid the flex at the bottom um, cause that can tear it. And just with taking those few moments of being careful of removing the hot glue on the sides, I was able to take it out. Now I've never had an issue or replaced that hot glue up top because it does get secured with a bracket. So that's why I don't offer any sort of like adhesive that I put here. It's held in place. Haven't had any issues. All right. Now let's put our antenna back in place in some replacement parts. There won't be screw holes for this particular antenna. And that even comes straight from Samsung, um, genuine parts, it may not have it. So for me, it just rests in its groove um, and I'll address that. But now I'm just connecting the three ribbons from the daughter board to the motherboard. And again, they're just clip-in style connectors. And here's that antenna I was talking about in this particular spot, there are not screw holes on the replacement part, but there were on the original. So this gets taped or glued over afterwards. I've never seen a concern or that it will mess with your service of any kind, but just something to be aware of. Um, so you're not shocked if you get a replacement part and it doesn't have screw holes. You can still proceed with repair. It's common practice on some of these Samsung models. Right, and just go ahead and connect your battery. Again, it, you can't do the battery last on this particular model because this whole um, bracket goes over it. So we're gonna start with the loudspeaker and this tucks into the frame. So you kind of do a downward and push um, type towards the frame because there are some plastic clips. Now we're gonna do the same with the top. It has some plastic clips at the top. You scoop it into the frame and then press down. Those plastic tabs tuck into the frame. And then lastly, fold over your wireless coil. And there are our two flexes that we need to clip there. And then what I'm doing is testing that the whole bracket is just flush. If it's not, you may have have a trapped cable or even worse, maybe a loose screw. But now I'm just gonna proceed with putting in the rest of the screws, those 12 to 13, depending on your model. All right, now that we have all of our screws back into place and make sure that it's all flush and there's nothing sticking up or raised, 
don't forget your SIM card and your stylus. Again, after when you're done with this and you're testing, um, you just wanna make sure that you're testing it accurately and that all the parts are there. Now let's talk about the back panel. I'm gonna put that on the heat plate because I'm gonna remove all the old existing adhesive. You don't wanna double it up and you don't wanna reuse the existing adhesive. So while that's heating up, we're gonna go ahead and test it. Now you can do a functional test, which means you know, you're gonna open up the dialer, maybe place a phone call, put it on a wireless charging pad. But one kind of cool thing with Samsung is they have an internal diagnostics mode on the dialer. So if you open up the dialer and hit star pound, zero star pound, it's gonna pull up their hidden menu. Deep inside the actual settings of the phone, they actually have this in the de device care section. Um, but this one's useful just to test really quickly. Dead pixels, vibration. Um, it's also gonna have uh, your rear camera, which will test the flash at the same time, and you can test the different modes. So that's a super helpful test. And then uh, front facing camera is another good one. Speakers, it shows you it's testing the bottom firing speaker, the ear speaker, and both at the same time. It also has a microphone test where it tests all three microphones on there as well. So if this is a customer facing device, um, if, this, if the device is in maintenance mode, which just blocks off all of the uh, personal customer information, you can still access the dialer, which lets you test some diagnostic features. So here, example of a touch screen test, just lets you test certain touch portions of the display. Um, so yeah, just a very simple, easy way to test a few things that all galaxies have, except for phones running on Verizon. I have no idea why they have blocked that. So let's talk about putting on the back panel. Um, I'm removing all the old adhesive. I like to replace it with a similar like sticky type of adhesive that was on there called Tessa tape. Now you, you don't really want to claim that this is now going to be waterproof. It's technically sold as water resistant, but the, the downside of using the tape that I'm showing you, if you're not really thorough with it is you can either overlap it and make it thicker, or if you don't fill it, like uh, put it down properly, there's gonna be gaps. So it may introduce water or dust if you're not careful. So if you are experienced and you like this traditional style adhesive like that's on the back panel, go with Tessa tape. If not, they make liquid adhesives, which could give you more coverage and a little bit likely that it's going to stick. Like an E8000 or a T8000 liquid adhesive combined with um, clamping it for about 30 to 45 minutes has been effective for me. Hopefully this has helped and good luck on your repair.